so shutdown is basically that limp, collapsed, immobilized uh, function of our nervous system. It's a dorsal vagal. It's called dorsal vagal shutdown because it comes from the dorsal vagal uh, area of the brainstem. And you can feel it in your gut oftentimes. It feels like emptiness or isolation, disconnection, dissociation, numbness. Numbness is very common. Fogginess, just living in a fog. That's a very common uh, description of what it's like to be in shutdown. This is different than freeze. I, I think it's really important to go over this before I go further because freeze and shutdown are different things. They have distinct feels. In therapy, I treat them differently. So shutdown, that's what, that's what shutdown is. Freeze is a mixed state of the polyvagal theory. Dorsal vagal shutdown is a primary state because it utilizes the primary pathway, one of the three main pathways uh, of the polyvagal theory, the dorsal vagal pathway. Freeze is when we have two pathways that are active at the same time, and that would be the dorsal vagal immobilization along with the sympathetic flight fight mobilization. So we're mobilized but immobile at the same time, meaning that we're really revved up, the motor's going, the heartbeat's pumping, the heart's pumping, the uh, blood is like going through the system, the motor's on, but we're also immobilizing at the same time. It could look a lot like a panic attack where you're hyper mobilized, ready to run or fight, but then also either perceived immobilization is happening at the same time or forced immobilization. So shutdown and freeze are different. We're talking about shutdown in particular, which has a much different flavor. When we're coming out of shutdown, remember the polyvagal ladder. And again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back to episode 101, start there. On the polyvagal ladder, the dorsal vagal shutdown state is at the very bottom of the polyvagal ladder. If we can't be safe, then we shift in down the polyvagal ladder into the flight, fight, sympathetic pathways, flight, then fight. And if we can't run away, if we can't fight, we drop all the way down to the bottom rung of the polyvagal ladder, and that's the shutdown state. We immobilize, we collapse, uh, we death vein. All of these are to increase the chances of survival. But it's a ladder, so we go down in that sequence. We also come up in that sequence, or, or the opposite sequence. Coming out of a dorsal vagal shutdown, the next step is the sympathetic flight fight system, but it's the fight system first. What could happen, what is likely to happen, what I see happen in my clients through therapy is they come out of that empty shutdown state and up into a very irritated or angry fight sympathetic state. So what's the best way to do that? I don't know. Because I don't I don't know you, uh, dear listener. I don't know you in particular. Uh, Annabelle, I obviously can't answer for you as well. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the best way. Now, what could commonly be helpful that, that we can talk about? And I think you've heard me talk on the podcast before that the techniques of what we do are not as important and very widely from person to person, not as important as simply experiencing whatever it is we're going through. So experiencing the state of shutdown. And if you can really feel it, really experience it, your body will tell you what to do next. Now, it might help to have techniques planned out ahead of time. You can be curious, test things out. But ultimately, you really need to experience what it feels like. One, to be in shutdown. But also, two, it's really important to build up the safety pathways, the ventral vagal safety pathways, in order to build a tolerance to coming out of that shutdown and up into that sympathetic flight fight energy. So what's the best way in general? I think a slow process. It's it's a slow process. So recognizing that, being patient with yourself coming out of it, or even somebody else if you have a loved one that is in a shutdown, or or one of your therapy clients if you're a therapist or a coach, one of your coaching clients. So recognizing it, it's a slow process. We cannot force it. We cannot force it. Deb Dana has this analogy that she got from somebody else. I don't know who, who it was, but the analogy is basically if you wanted a turtle to come out of its shell, you wouldn't bang on it and shake it and yell at it to come out. No, you'd kind of just hang out there with it and sit calmly and patiently and eventually it'll come out of its shell. It's a slow process though. And having somebody with you can be helpful. Having a safe co-regulator can be helpful. 
what that looks like again it's it's up near maybe you need someone around you that has a good sense of humor maybe you need someone around you that's just with you and they're quiet maybe you need someone around you that gives more of that energizing pep talk i don't know but having someone that is safe and a co-regulator that can be with you that could help but still calm a uh, slow process, low stimulation is a very good idea. I think if you're coming out of a dorsal vagal shutdown, going to a rave might not be ideal. Might not be. At the same time, if you're coming out of a... Well, actually, if you're in a dorsal vagal shutdown, going to a rave might not be a great idea. If you're coming out of it and you like to dance and you like loud um, music and you like crowds, that might be a good fit for you. Maybe that's a great way for you to release some sympathetic energy. But in general, I think that when we're in that shutdown state, less stimulation is a really good idea. Less people, generally, I think a really good idea. Being patient with it, having quiet. I personally find that to be really helpful. I like quiet. When I'm in a really, you know, true shutdown state, and I like quiet. When I get in my car, usually I like a lot of music in my car. I turn it way up, heavy metal, hip hop, whatever it is. And that usually that's the way I like things. But when I'm in more of a shutdown state, not so much. I really, I just, I just ask myself, I look inward and say, no, it's, it's, I just need quiet. And so I'll have it quiet in the car. I'll, I'll come into my office here and sit quietly in the corner. It just like, I just know what I need. So quiet, I think helps low stimulation, dim lighting. I think dim lighting is again, that low stimulation. I find that helps. My office has sound dampening for the the podcast, but I just kind of like the sound dampening. There's no echo in here, really. When I walk into this room, I, it sounds different, and that lower level of stimulation, I respond well to that. It just it feels right. Slow movements are probably a good idea. Might not be any movement at all. You might want to just curl up and be in bed. And if you can mindfully do that, that can actually help. If you're not mindfully doing it and you're just doing that day in day out, that that's not helpful. That's more of a that's more of a potential like behavioral adaptation to the shutdown state, but it's not really all that helpful as far as coming out of it. So slow movements might be a really good idea. If you, if you like to dance, then some sort of slow dance might be helpful for you just to feel into that shutdown state. If you like to draw, you might really take your time and just slow down and feel the paper and feel the markers or the pencils. If you like to paint, you might really slow down and just kind of see that process unfold in front of you instead of rushing through it. But the point here is with slowing down, with dimming the lights or reducing stimulation, the point is to feel into the shutdown state. And that might mean, if, as you're ready for it, this is the caveat, as you're ready for it, if you're ready for it, don't do this if you're not ready for it, okay? But really, we're discussing feeling into the shutdown state. That means feeling into the emptiness, the loneliness, the disconnection, the feeling of want, whatever images might come to your mind to be with those, if you can handle that. If you can handle that. Meditation can be helpful. But at the same time, you know, a lot of the clients that I, many of the clients that I've uh, worked with that have this more shutdown flavor, their impulse is to be in bed. Their impulse is to, usually it's to isolate. And that makes sense in a shutdown state because you feel so disconnected from everybody else or the world or even yourself. So isolating makes sense. They feel this impulse to dim the lights and be in bed and isolate. And that's not a bad thing. It, that might be the next step for your system. And that's okay. But can you feel into it and really be in that, that shutdown? And if you can mindfully be with it, then the sympathetic energy can start to return in, in little bits. Usually it's like a little bit of time. But the images that come to your mind, that might be something you can journal around or, or meditate on. One of my clients, she had pretty severe shutdown stuff going on. And the image that came into her mind, because I was asking her what it felt like for her to be in shut down and she said it felt lonely i said well what does it feel like to be lonely like describe that for me and then she she had an image that came to her mind and the image was of her being in a cellar with stairs that went up to the door to get you know to the rest of the house to get out of the cellar or the basement 
but it was locked and somebody was on the other side of it. And she was able to paint this picture or, you know, mentally with her words of being in this dark, damp place where she could hear water dropping. And there was just like one bulb that was on in this uh, make-believe basement. So being with these images can help describing what it feels like through images or through texture or through color, whatever you can do to allow yourself to describe and to be with these things, to journal around it, to make notes on it, to meditate on it, wherever, wherever feels best for you. Or to allow these images and these feelings to come and then to, if, if you're a dancer, like let it out through dance. Feel it in your movements. That might be helpful. It might be hard to just be with the feelings, but you might be able to just be with the feelings through some other medium, like an artistic medium or meditation or whatever it is, like, or even the images that pop in your mind. You might be able to be with the shutdown state through that. 